In this video, we'll review how to find whether or not a 3 by 3 matrix is diagonalizable. In this case, I have the matrix A that's presented here. I want to know if it's diagonalizable, and what that means is, is there a diagonal matrix, which I'm calling D, and an invertible matrix, which I'm calling P, such that A can be written as P times D times P inverse. In other words, is A similar to a diagonal matrix? In order to do that, you need to know about the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix. In previous videos, we've discussed those quantities and we'll review what we learned um, in those videos here. We saw that lambda equal to 1 was an eigenvalue of the matrix A. The corresponding eigenspace, which is the null space of A minus I, is spanned by the single vector 1, 0, 0. So 1, 0, 0 is an eigenvector corresponding with 2 lambda equal to 1. Lambda equal to 2 was also an eigenvalue. Its null space was also one-dimensional and it was spanned by the vector 2, 1, 2. So this is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 2. Finally, lambda equal to minus 4 was an eigenvalue and its null space its eigenspace, rather the null space of a plus 4i, is spanned by the vector 1, 5, minus 5. A matrix is diagonalizable if and only if it has enough linearly independent eigenvectors. In this case, I have a 3 by 3 matrix. I will need three linearly independent eigenvectors. We're lucky here. I do have one, two, three eigenvectors. They are linearly independent because they correspond to different eigenvalues and therefore cannot be scalar multiples of each other. Otherwise, they would have, uh, be eigenvectors for the other eigenvalues and they, they, it just can't happen that way. And so uh, it must be that these three vectors that I've uh, found, that are these three eigenvectors uh, are linearly independent. Therefore, my matrix A will be diagonalizable. It's up to me now to tell you what P and D will be. To find P, take your eigenvectors and use them as the columns of the matrix P. So I'm going to let P be the matrix 1, 0, 0. I take the second eigenvector and the third one and put them into the columns. This matrix P is necessarily invertible. Its columns are linearly independent, and that's one of the conditions for being an invertible matrix, is if your columns are linearly independent. The diagonal matrix D that we will, will take will be the uh, matrix whose diagonal entries are the eigenvalues. And you, the only thing you have to worry about here is that you do it in the order that you did the eigenvectors. So for instance, 1, 0, 0 corresponded to uh, lambda equal to 1, the second vector corresponded to lambda equal to 2, and the third one corresponds to lambda equal to minus 4. So you should take D to be the matrix 1, 2, and minus 4 along the diagonal in that order, preserving the order that you wrote the eigenvectors in. This matrix is diagonal, this matrix is invertible, and if you take P times D times P inverse, you will recover our original matrix A above. Yes, this matrix is diagonalizable because it had three linearly independent eigenvectors. Those three eigenvectors determine the matrix P, and the corresponding eigenvalues determine the matrix D.